Next point is Fupen, bladder 41. So this point is on the upper back, three turn lateral to the lower border of the second thoracic vertebra. So the previous points from bladder 11 all the way down to the lower back, bladder 24, 25, they were all 1.5 turn lateral to the midline. This, that's over here. Now we're going to look at the line of points which are three turn lateral to the midline. And this is from bladder 41 onwards. And the indications for this point is for stiffness and pain of the shoulder, back and neck and numbness of the elbow and arm. The insertion, it's oblique insertion, 0,3 to 0,5 turn. Usually we needle in an inferior direction, so that's towards the bottom of the body here. Yeah? And the caution is against deep perpendicular or oblique in needling in a medial direction, as both of these carry the risk of causing pneumothorax. So the next point is Pohu bladder 42. This point is located on the upper back, three turn lateral to the lower border of the third thoracic vertebra. So if you remember how we collect, how we locate these points is we first have to find C6 and C7. And on the image here, if you look, we, we first look going to locate C6, C7, and then we're going to count downwards to T1, T2, and then T3. And then obviously we're going three turn lateral to that spinous process. The indications for this point can be used for pulmonary tuberculosis, hemoptysis, cough, polypnea, and then the local functions, neck rigidity, pain in the shoulder and the back. Our needling, we're going in oblique, oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 turn, and then remember the caution again against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction, as both of these have the risk of puncturing the lungs. The next point is Gao Hong Shu, bladder 43. It's located on the back, three turn lateral to the lower border of the fourth thoracic vertebra. So we're going to count down to T4, and then we're going to go three turn lateral, and remember it's on the medial border of the scapula. Our indications, so we've got local indications, such as pain of the scapular region, and then it can also be used for pulmonary tuberculosis, cough, polypnea, and also for night sweats, poor memory, and nocturnal emissions. The needling, oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun, and then we've got that same caution against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction. The next point is Shentang, bladder 44. It's located on the back, three tsun lateral to the lower border of the fifth thoracic vertebra, T5. So we're going to count down to T5, feel for the lower border, and then we're going three tsun lateral. So this point's indications are related to the location of the point. So it can be used for stiffness and pain of the back. And then if we think about which organs are close to this point, we'll, know, we'll remember that the heart is in this region and then, and then the lungs are on either side. So this point can be used for, for lung conditions such as cough, polypnea, chest tightness, and then also for heart-related conditions such as cardiac pain or palpitations. Our needling is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun, and remember the caution against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction. Next is Yi Shi, bladder 45. This point is also located on the back, 3 tsun lateral to the lower border of the 6th thoracic vertebra, also known as T6. And this point is used for conditions such as cough and asthma, and then also for pain of the shoulder and back. Our needling is the same, it's oblique insertion 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. Um, and remember for all of these ones, it's suggested to go inferior or towards the lower portion of the body when inserting. And the caution against deep perpendicular insertion or oblique needling in a medial direction. The next point is Gaguan, bladder 46. This point is located on the back three tsun lateral to the lower border of the seventh thoracic vertebra. And how we usually locate this point is we use the inferior angle of the scapula. So you follow the lateral border and the medial border of the scapula, and the point where they join forms a little point, and we call that the inferior angle of the scapula. And that is usually level with the lower border of T7. Okay, so like that, it's normally level. Um, it's not exact because everyone's body is different, but 
in general, it's normally level with T7. So this can help you to find the points from T7 down and T6 and T5 as well. The indication for this point can be used for conditions related to the stomach, such as dysphagia, hiccuping, vomiting, and belching. And then it can also be used for pain and stiffness of the back. Our needling direction is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tin, and we usually go in an inferior direction. And then the, the same caution of not inserting deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction. Next is Hunmen, bladder 47. It's located on the back, three tun lateral to the lower border of the ninth thoracic vertebra. So just note here, we're now at T9, so we skipped T8. Um, there's not a point lateral to T8. And this point's indications are, again, related to its location. So it can be used for things such as back pain. And then if you see here on the image, it's close to the hypochondriac area over here. Um, so it can also be used for pain in the chest and hypochondriac region. And then it can be used for vomiting and diarrhea. Our needling direction is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tin, and the caution against the deep perpendicular or oblique needling. The next point is Yang Kang, bladder 48. Also located on the back, more towards the middle back, and it's three tun lateral to the 10th thoracic vertebra. And then this point's indications are again related to its location. So we can use it for pain of the hypochondriac region. And then we can also use it for conditions related to the stomach. And that's symptoms such as bulborygmus, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. The incision, insertion is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tin and the caution against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction. Next, we're looking at the Isha, that of 49. This point is on the lower to middle back, three turn lateral to the lower border of the 11th thoracic vertebra. This is level with P shoe bladder 20, which was 1.5 turn lateral to T11 over here. The indications for this point, it can be used for abdominal distension, borborygmus, vomiting and diarrhea, and, it can, and the needling is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tun, and careful against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction, as both of these carry the risk of causing pneumothorax. The next point is Wei Kang, bladder 50. It's located on the back, 3 tun lateral to T12, or the 12th thoracic vertebra. Uh, indications here are for conditions such as abdominal distension, pain in the epigastric region and back, or infantile indigestion. It can also be used for oedema or backache. And that obviously the backache is due to its location being close to the lower back region, this region. And then insertion is oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tin. And remember the caution again against deep perpendicular or oblique needling in a medial direction. The next point is Huang Men, bladder 51. This point is located on the lower back, three tun lateral to the lower border of the first lumbar vertebra. So now you must be aware we're now in the lumbar region. So this one is at L1. The indications for this point, it can be used for abdominal pain, constipation, or abdominal masses. And be aware it can also be used for problems of the breasts. Needling, it's oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tin. And yeah, we've got to be cautious against deep perpendicular or oblique insertions as these carry a risk of injuring the kidneys. And the kidneys sit at this region. So that's why you've got to be careful with these points. The next point is Chushu, bladder 52. So this point is located on the lower back, 3 tin lateral to the lower border of the second lumbar vertebra, L2. And this is level with bladder 23, also known as Shen Shu. So this point's indications are related to the location of the point. And if we think about this point, what it's located close to, we can see it's quite close to the pelvic region. And inside the pelvic region, this region over here on the picture, we know that there's both the male or all the female organs and the bladder. So we can see functions such as nocturnal emissions and impotence in men, or irregular menstruation in women, and then the bladder problems such as enuresis, frequent urination, dysuria, 
and edema. Then also the other function because of its location is that it can treat lower back pain. And then our insertion here, to just note this insertion is now perpendicular. This is the first point that is perpendicular again. And one caution here is that we should not insert deep as this can puncture the kidneys. Um, so there is a fair bit of muscle here, but we've got to be careful not to go deeper than one twin, especially in, in, in thinner individuals, as the kidneys we, we know are situated around this region. Um, the next point is Bao Huang, bladder 53. So this point is located in the gluteus region now, and it's still three twin lateral to the midline. And note here that it's the second sacral posterior foramen. So we've skipped the first one going on. We skipped this first one. We have no point here lateral to this first sacral foramen. And the indications of this point, it's for things such as borborygmus, abdominal distension, and an anuria. And then because of its location, it can be used to treat pain of the lower back. Our insertion here again is perpendicular. 0.8 to 1.2 tun. The next point is Jibian, bladder 54. This point is also located on the gluteal region, 3 tun lateral to the midline, and it's lateral to the sacro coccygeal hiatus. So what this means is this is the join between the sacrum and the coccyx. And if you look at the image here, it's the, the you can see here, here's the sacrum, uh, this bone over here, just highlighting it. That's the sacrum. And the coccyx is a little tail, it's like a tailbone. And that's over there. And we're looking for the join between the two. We're going to then, we're going to go three soon lateral to this join. Uh, this point can be used for things according to its location. So we can do it, use it for things such as pain of the lumbosacral region. Um, so again, lumbo, the lumbar vertebra and the sacral region. And then it can be also used for motor impairment of the lower extremities, dysuria, and then because it's close to the anus, we can use it for things such as hemorrhoids, constipation, and then also for swelling and pain around the external genitalia. Our insertion here is perpendicular insertion, and you can see the depth is quite uh, quite a lot because obviously the buttocks is a, a large muscular area as well as fatty tissue. So we can go 1.5 to 2 tun. Next point is her young bladder 55. So now we've moved all the way down to the gastrocnemius muscle. And this point is below the popliteal fossa, 2 tun inferior to bladder 40. So we're going 2 tun below bladder 40. And it's between the medial and the lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. So this is the space between the two heads over here, highlighted in red now. And then... If you cannot feel these easily, you can also use the line from bladder 40 to bladder 57. So bladder 57 is in this upside down triangle that your gastrocnemius muscle forms. It's in the tip of that triangle. Okay. The indications for this point, it's used for lower back pain, pain and paralysis of the lower extremities, and metoragia. And the needling is 0.7 to 1 tun perpendicular. Um, and that's just because this is obviously a, a fairly muscular area, but not as muscular as the upper legs. The next point is Ching Jin, bladder 56. It's also located on the lower leg, midway between He Yang, bladder 55, and Cheng Shan, bladder 57. And it's in the center of the belly of the gastrocnemius muscle. The indications here, so the local indication is for spasm of the gastrocnemius, and then because of the pathway of the meridian, it can also treat hemorrhoids and acute lower back pain. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0 .0, I mean 0.8 or 1.2 tsun. Next, we'll look at Chengsheng, bladder 57. This point is located on the lower leg in the depression below the bellies of the gastrocnemius muscles. So this means the bellies, it's this it's the tip of that upside down triangle we just talked about over here. So you can see this quite easily on the more muscular individuals. And it's approximately midway between bladder 40 up here at the top and bladder 60, which is here in line with the 
lateral malleolus. It's indications are for things such as lower back pain and spasm of the gastrocnemius, and then hemorrhoids and constipation. Our insertion is perpendicular, one to one and a half twin. The next point is Fei Yang, bladder 58. It's the Lao connecting point of the bladder meridian. So what does that mean? What is a Lao connecting point? Well, well, that's the point that connects both the interior and exterior meridian. And what this means is it's more effective at treating disorders along its meridian. So we'll see this now, now in the indications, but let's first go through the location. So it's on the lower leg, seven sun directly superior to Kun Lun, bladder 60. And it's on the posterior border of the fibula, about one sun inferior and lateral to Cheng Shan, bladder 57. So you've got to first find bladder 57, and then you've got to go one sun inferior and lateral. So we're going one foot sun inferior and lateral. And it's approximately seven sun uh, superior to bladder 60. So like I said, because of its function as a Luau connecting point, it can treat conditions along the meridian. So you can see all the way up at the head, it can treat headache, dizziness, and blurring of vision. It can treat nasal obstruction and epistaxis. It can treat hemorrhoids. And then it can also be used for back pain and weakness of the legs. Our needling is perpendicular insertion, 0 0.7 to 1 sun. The next point is Fu Yang, bladder 59. So this is the Xi cleft point of the meridian. Can anyone remember the function of Xi cleft points? So these are used more commonly for acute conditions. This point, Fu Yang, is located on the lower leg, three tsun directly above Kunlun, bladder 60. The indications for this point, it can be used for lower back pain, redness and swelling of the external malleolus, and paralysis of the lower extremities. So those are all related to its location. And then it can also be used for headache. The insertion is perpendicular, 0 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point we're going to look at is Kunlun, bladder 60. So this is a Jing River and fire point of the meridian. And it is also one of Mada Yang's 11 heavenly star points. And these were the grouping of 11 points that Mada Yang said was the most important for acupuncturists to know. Uh, the location of this point, it's on the ankle, in the depression between the apex of the lateral malleolus and the tendocalcaneus, or also known as the Achilles tendon. So how we find this point is we first locate the lateral malleolus, which is the high point of the outside of the ankle over here on the image. And then we palpate backwards to locate the Achilles tendon over here. And then between these two points, you'll feel there is a depression, this depression here. And this point lies between the Achilles tendon and the, and the lateral malleolus. The indications for this point, we can use it for headache, neck rigidity, pain in the shoulder, back or arm, and also swelling and pain of the ankle. It can also be used for difficult labor and epilepsy. And our needling is perpendicular insertion, 0 0.5 to 1 sun. The caution here is that you should not use this point in pregnancy as it can induce labor. And also you have to be careful in patients who are on their cycle as this can increase the amount of blood flow. The next point is Pukan, bladder 61. So this point is located on the lateral side of the foot posterior and inferior to the lateral malleolus. So once again, we've got to find that highest point of the ankle, known as the lateral malleolus, over there on the image. And then we've got to go posterior, so that means behind, and inferior. So posterior like that, and then inferior to find the point. And it's directly below, so if you look here, it's directly below bladder 60, the previous point and it's at the junction of the red and white skin. So remember, that's a junction where the skin goes from the white of the sole to the, to the normal color of the foot. The indications for this point, it can be used for muscular atrophy and weakness of the lower extremities or pain in the heel. Our needling is perpendicular insertion, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 tsun. The next point is Shin Mai, bladder 62. This is a confluent point of the young heel vessel and it is located on the lateral side of the foot 
in the depression directly below the external malleolus. So what this means is you've got to find the high point of the ankle, the outside of the ankle, and then you're going to palpate downwards until you feel the depression directly below it. And that is this point. The indications of this point are related to it being a confluent point of the young heel vessel. And what this means is that it can treat conditions along the vessel, along the flow of the vessel. So if we look at an image here, we can see the direction of flow. It starts at bladder 62, flows along the lateral aspect of the leg all the way up the lateral torso and then the shoulder region and then it goes up to the front of the face and then runs all the way over the head and around the ear to the occipital region. So it can treat conditions along the bladder meridian but also along the young heel vessel. So you can see this in the indications. It can be used for headache and vertigo. As you can see, the young heel vessel goes all the way here to the, to the side of the head. So it can treat both occipital, because that's the bladder meridian flowing there in the occipital region, but also the front, frontal or the side of the head due to the young heel vessel. It can also treat vertigo, epilepsy, mania, and insomnia. So these are all conditions of the mind and the head, and that's because of this being a confluent point of the young heel vessel. And then because it's also a point of the bladder meridian, it can also treat backache and aching of the legs. And this aching of the legs is referring to the back of the legs, most likely. Um, it can do the other parts, but we normally use different points on different meridians if the pain is in different regions. Needling, it's perpendicular insertion, 0, 0,3 to 0, 0,5 tin. The next point is Jin Men bladder 63. This is a she cleft point and it is located on the lateral side of the foot, anterior and inferior to the lateral malleolus, in the depression posterior to the base of the fifth metatarsal protuberance, on the lower border of the cuboid bone. So this is a lot to take into, so let's break it down step by step. So firstly it's on the lateral side of the foot, so that's the outer portion. Next, it says anterior and inferior to the, anti to the lateral malleolus. So the lateral malleolus, like we talked about in the previous points, it's over here. So we have to go anterior this way and inferior to this point. And then it says in the depression posterior to the base of the fifth metatarsal protuberance. So if you look here, this is the fifth metatarsal here I'm coloring in. And the base is the, this part here. This is the base. Normally we consider this side the base and the head of the fifth metatarsal would be this side. So we add the base. So leave that one highlighted. And then it says on the lower border of the cuboid bone. So that tells us that it must be posterior to the base. And that's how you get the points over here. Okay, because this is the cuboid bone bone here. The indication, so this point can be used for backache. Pain of the lateral malleolus, that's local function, and motor impairment and pain of the lower extremities. It can also be used to, for epilepsy, mania, and infantile convulsions. Our insertion is perpendicular insertion, 0, 0,3 to 0, 0,5 tsun. So next we'll look at Jinggu, that is 64. This is the Yuan source point of the meridian. And can anyone remember the function of the Yuan source points? So these points are particularly good at treating the corresponding Zhangfu organ. So in this case, the bladder disorders of the bladder organ. And this location of this point is on the lateral side of the foot in the depression anterior and inferior to the base of the fifth metatarsal bone's prominence at the junction of the red and white skin. So if we look here at the image, remember for the previous point, we had to find this tuberance which we located by palpating along the outside of the, the lateral aspect of the foot until we could feel this tuberosity over here. And then we're going to go inferior and anterior to this. So as you can see, just anterior in front of and inferior. And we're going to look for the, 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 there's a small depression just anterior and inferior. And that's going to be a long, level with the junction of the red and the white skin over here. The indications for this point can be used for headache, neck rigidity, pain in the lower back and thigh, and epilepsy, and then as well as conditions of the kidney organ. I mean the, I mean the bladder organ. And then needling, it's perpendicular insertion, 0, 0,3 to 0, 0,5 tsun.
Next point is Shugu, bladder 65. This is a shoe stream and wood point. Its location is again on the lateral side of the foot, posterior to the head of the fifth metatarsal bone at the junction of the red and white skin. So let's break it down again. So we're again going to palpate along the lateral aspect of the foot, feeling along for the bones. You're going to go past that protuberance from the previous two and continue along the metatarsal bone until we get to, to its head, head. So normally the base is considered this side and the head is considered this side of the metatarsal. And then once we're at the head of the metatarsal over here, we're going to go just posterior to it. So let's just... So we're just going to go a bit behind it and look for that depression just posterior to the head. Um, and again, once again, this will follow that junction of red and white skin over here. The indications for this point, similar to the previous point, can be used for things such as headache, neck rigidity, dizziness, also back pain and pain of the lower extremities, and once again, epilepsy and mania. The needling, it's perpendicular insertion, 0,3 to 0,5 turn. Remember the points on the foot, there's not much flesh and muscles, so the, ep the insertion is not going to be very deep. The next point is Zhu Tong Gu, bladder 66. This is the Xing spring and water point of the meridian. It is located on the lateral side of the foot in the depression anterior to the fifth metatarsal phalangeal joint. So, like we said for the previous point, you're going to palpate all the way along the lateral aspect of the foot until you find the head over here of the fifth metatarsal. And instead of going posterior to it, we're now going to go anterior to the to the head of the metatarsal. And this is going to, so we're going to just go anterior and slightly inferior to find that small depression that lies just, just below the base of the first phalanges. The indications for this point, it's headache, neck rigidity, backache. It can also be used for epistaxis and for epilepsy and mania. The needling, it's now going towards the smaller part of the of the foot, so it's perpendicular insertion, 0, 0,2 to 0, 0,3 tsun. The next point is Zhe Yin, that is 67. This is the Jingwell and metal point of the meridian, and it is located on the dorsal aspect of the, of the little toe. So remember, we've moved from the lateral side to now to more to the dorsal aspect, and it's 0, 0,1 tsun from the lateral corner of the base of the little toenail. So in the image here, here's the little toe. Now we're going to the lateral corner over there. And then the indications for this point, we can use it for malposition of the fetus, the difficult labor and retention of the placenta. It can also be used for headache, ophthalmalgia, nasal obstruction and epistaxis. And finally for feverish sensation in the soles. Our needling, so normally we're doing a shallow insertion a perpendicular shallow insertion and one thing to note here is that when you're using this point for malposition of the fetus we normally use moxibustion on this point for that to treat that condition so that's the end of the bladder meridian it's the meridian with the most points with 67 points in total and remember that this meridian is used a lot for treating back pain and because it has the back shoe points, it can be used for a wide variety of conditions, as the back shoe can be used to tonify their corresponding organs. Next, we will look at the kidney meridian of the foot, Shaoyan.